Welcome to Cubs Baseball here on Marquee Sports Network. This afternoon, the Cubs wrap up the first half and the series finale here from the Bronx Yankee Stadium. Cubs Yankees game three. Hello there. John Chami and Jim Deshays, Elise Medeker, will join us coming up. So the conclusion of the first half here this afternoon and a chance to pick up a win with Kyle Hendricks on the mound. It's been good. Yeah, you like your odds the way Kyle Hendricks has been uh, throwing the baseball. Uh, last five starts, he's 3-1 and one with a 1.95 ERA. He's been leaning heavily on that sinker changeup combination. You see the numbers for him since coming out the IL. He's made eight starts, pitched to a 2.64 ERA walks her down, generating a lot of soft contact. Not on that occasion. Heck of a play on that comeback. When he's right, you see a lot of that. Rowdy Telez in between there, that little half swing because the changeup is so deceptive. Domingo Herman goes for the Yankees. He's got a perfect game on his resume this season, but he's in the middle of a really weird stretch. Yeah, uh, two starts ago he had the perfect game against the Oakland A's, but he's been far from perfect this year. The two starts leading into that perfect, uh, perfect game, he allowed 15 runs in five and a third inning. He made one start since the perfecto, and he didn't throw the ball particularly well in that game uh, either. But for one shining moment, he was outstanding in Oakland. 27 up, 27 down. First perfect game in Major League Baseball since Felix Hernandez back in 2012. It's a good song, one shining at Coleman. Yeah, I feel like doing some NCAA tournament. Finger roll. All right, it's game, Vandros. game three, the series finale coming up here in the Bronx. Game one, it was Tyone absolutely dealing against his former team. Bellinger at four hits, including a homer in game two. Giancarlo Stan, a couple of homers. Garrett Cole was outstanding. Can the Cubs pick up a win in the finale? Stay tuned. To you by Blue Cross Blue Shield. Through it all, by Ford. Visit your local Ford dealer today. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards. A look at some of the former Cub All-Stars. Those four guys right there combined 39 All-Star appearances, finishing with Rhino. As we're back here at Yankee Stadium, getting ready for the conclusion of the first half of the Cubs and the Yankees game three. Another steamy one, and hopefully we'll be dodging the raindrops here this afternoon. Book Shambi and Jim Deshays had timed out to send it downstairs and say hello to Elise Meneker. Hi, Boog Shambi. Can confirm it's not raining right now. It's even a little sunny. That could be a little deceiving. But let's first talk about Kyle Hendricks making his final start of the first half. Asked David Ross about his first half before today's game. He was just talking about, look, we know that when Kyle Hendricks is healthy, he's really good. He has been healthy. That's shown in his velocity, hitting more in that 88 range versus, say, 86 miles per hour when he's been injured. The sharpness of his pitches stands out, especially that change up the depth and movement and now he's calling his own pitches with that pitch com and so just a really good first half from Kyle Hendricks besides really that first start where he was a little rusty he has been really good and bounced back really quickly we hope the weather here today is really good so here's the deal guys the heavy rain should be staying to the west of us during this game there could be some pop up showers throughout the game so I'm hopeful that we'll be good and in the clear and Maybe that's not just for the Cubs' sake, but for my own, sitting down here today. So that's we'll right. <laughs> All right, well, stay dry down there. Elise Medeker, purple ribbon in her hair. And we get ready for baseball as the Cubs and Yankees wrap up the first half. Of course, Dansby Swanson into the foreground there on the IL. So the Cubs, once again today, without their all-star shortstop, the Yankees getting set to take the field. Umpires meeting there at home plate as the Cubs in the first two games of this series. Well, game one, it was about Jamison Tyone. In game two, Giancarlo Stanton with a pair of home runs. Garrett Cole was quite good. The Yankees take the field and probably check out the Cubs starting lineup against this Yankee team. For the Cubs, their lineup is brought to you by Vinny's Beverage Depot. If you can't find it at Vinny's, it's probably not worth drinking. The Cubs are seventh in the National League out of 15 teams in runs per game. So right there, middle of the pack. Talkman is the DH. He'll lead it all, followed by Horner and Hap. Seiya Suzuki, Cody Bellinger, and Christopher Morell will bat four, five, six. Young Wisdom and Barnhart are the bottom three. Happy birthday, by the way, number 28 to Jared Young and Tommy Hottaby's birthday today. So, yeah, a lot of cake in the clubhouse. 
I don't actually know that, but I, I think there might be a lot of cake in the clubhouse, JD. Uh, there'll be cake somewhere. Let them eat cake. And uh, Domingo Herman will pitch for the uh, New York Yankees today. Brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. It's kind of a right-handed version of Drew Smiley. Heavy usage of his curveball in his perfect game. He threw it over 50% of the time for the season. 41% of the time, he'll throw a fastball at 92, both a four-seamer and a two-seam sinker changeup in play as well for the 30-year-old right-hander. 85 and two-thirds innings, a 4.52 ERA. Three wins, three losses for the right-hander. Yankees defensively is brought to you by Ford. A lot of room out there in left uh, left center to cover. Billy McKinney gets left. Harrison Bader, the gold glovers in center. John Carlos Stanton plays right. LeMahieu's got four gold gloves. He's at third. Volpe and Torres up the middle. Big Riz with four gold gloves down there at first. And Kyle Hagashioka is the uh, catcher today for the Bombers. Mike Tachman will climb in. And Tachman overall at 41, three homers, 21 knocked in. Hit a homer yesterday. Yeah, the first offering of the game in for a strike, says Alex McKay. And he will throw a high percentage, a high percentage, excuse me, of first pitch strikes. Will Herman typically? And that one cuts across the corner, although K Zone said it was outside, and Tockman registering that complaint with Alex McKay. Let's beef a little bit with McKay and also reset down two strikes. That's one down in the minor leagues. You just tap your helmet and you challenge it. I may be coming to the big leagues in the next couple of years. Swing and a miss. And Herman able to get Tockman on three pitches. And a couple heaters, one that was off the plate, and then a change up at 86. Got Mike out in front a little bit. Nico Horner now. And a swing and a miss. The Yankees bleacher creatures going through their roll call as they acknowledge all the defensive players on the field. That's the sound you hear in the background. That one hit on the ground. LeMay Hugh handles the chance. Brought to you by your local Hyundai dealer. Yeah, limited looks. Uh, neither lineup has seen the opposing starting pitcher very much. This is, a matter of fact, it's Kyle Hendricks' first ever start here at uh, Yankee Stadium. He faced the Yankees once in his career back in 2017. On a bender, yeah, the curveball, a big pitch for Armand and uh, Harrison Bader has good numbers against Kyle, so got to keep him in check. Yeah, there's a strike to Ian Happ. Happ. Been scuffling a bit since that two homer game. He had Hap just five out of 40. Well, you talk about keys for the Cubs in the second half, and, and production from the corner outfielders has got to has got to jump up, right? Uh, it's certainly something they're capable of. Both we've seen Hap do it. We expect Suzuki to be more productive. That's the first pitch out of the strike zone for. Domingo Herman. Why does he wear number zero, Boog? It's a great question. <laughs> so I'm assuming you don't have the answer. The one two he is cut on and missed, struck him out. And he allows that many runs in the first That's inning. That's why Kyle Hendricks will take the mound when we come back. The Yankees lineup, it's brought to you by UI Health. And the Yankees on the season, ninth out of 15 teams in the AL in runs per game. It'll be Torres, Stanton, and Rizzo. And then Bader, Donaldson, McKinney, LeMay, Hugh, Volpe, and Higashioka. Tony Pitcher for the Cubs is brought to you by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Kyle Hendricks towing the slab here this afternoon. Fastball at 87. Uh, he's traded in some curveballs for changeups this year and he's been very effective, leaning heavily on that sinker changeup combination. 47 and two thirds, 2.64 ERA. Hendricks delivers. And yeah, the pitch is outside. 
All right, so Kyle started with a pitch clock violation, but I'm not sure why. What's up with that? I mean, it, if only they were wearing microphones. Oh, wait. Just, just convey that information to us. Slice the other way, and that'll fall for a hit. So Torres dunks one into right. Kyle makes a good pitch. Fastball moving in on his hands. He just fights it off. Uh, Hendricks has been really good at generating soft contact so far this year. This time, soft contact lands safely for Torres. Cubs dugout obviously not happy with that uh, pitch violation call. Yes. Hendricks are they're already in a little bit of a cranky mood and they're barking at McKay and he just ran Rossi. And Rossi's going to come out and get his money's worth. I don't need to pick him up on our, on our field microphone. Are you going to let me work today or not? He didn't want to hear Rossi giving him the business. Violation was called while Kyle was finishing up his warm ups. So he's still got one more warm up pitch, but apparently he. I didn't even know that was a rule. Nor did I. And David Ross done as Alex McKay has thrown him out. That's not the quickest hook a manager has ever gotten. It's known <laughs> to happen in exchanging yes. the lineup cards at home plate. With a, a beef from the previous day. Oh. I know it happened to Earl Weaver at least once. Stanton hit two home runs yesterday, a massive blast to left, and then a little flare to right. Now that flying bat had obviously upset the rhythm of that play with Stanton going down the line. It looked like, even though it was so softly hit, it looked like it would be a double play, but Nico had to adjust his route a little bit. Stanton's had all kinds of leg issues, so he's very cautious on the base paths. Yeah, good sign for Kyle so far. A little flare and then jam broken bat. And here's a fun matchup. Professor versus Rizzo. And Anthony Rizzo asks for time. Yeah, so I don't even I I'm going to try and get a rules clarification as to how that works, but I don't even know why he's getting a violation. Well, you know, there's an in-between innings clock. Right. Right that they have to adhere to. So I guess it you know. Let's have to do with that. It seems like at the start of a game, though, there would be a little wiggle room, but I guess the rule's a rule. Anthony had base hit in the ball game yesterday, but he's been in a prolonged slump. He has not homered. It's the third week of May. May 20th is last homer. 
And since then he's hit 199. That's over a 37 game stretch. Line drive and a base hit out of the right center field and that is going to score Glaber Torres. Suzuki picks it up Rizzo's into second of the Yankees have the lead. And just a mistake there fastball. Up over the middle of the plate. Rizzo was able to get a pretty good piece of it. Yankees draw first blood. This is the first time that Barnhart has caught Hendricks. Recent starts, it's been Miguel Amaya back there. Popped in the air and a catch made by Jared Young. And one of the things with Amaya catching him is, I mean, Kyle's been pretty much calling the game, right? Yeah, and I, you know, he is wearing the pitch com device, and he's calling his own pitches here today. Uh, you know, he and Barnhart, and as he was doing with Amaya, will talk a lot in between innings about what's working, what's not working, and how they want to progress. And and, and Barnhart obviously has the ability to to give his Im, uh, impressions as well. He can call for a pitch, but uh, right now Kyle is running the show. Donaldson here to DH. A home run yesterday off of Smiley, who's been Drew's nemesis, or at least one of them. Yankees jump out to the early lead on the Rizzo RBI double. Popped up Barnhart near the on deck circle and dodging the donuts and pine tar, etc. He's able to make the catch of the Yankee fans that Donaldson had. The Yankees, though, take the lead 1 0. As acting manager as David Ross has been ejected. And the pitch in for a strike. On the ground to third where LeMayhew gathers it in and throws out Suzuki. Young or no I beg your pardon Cody Bellinger here Cody yesterday 0 for 4 and had that 13 game hit streak end. But he's been swinging a really good bat going in to the break. Your mind's not going to overpower you with velocity. And a little more giddy up than, say, Kyle, but it's 91 92 for the most part. Look at how Herman takes the sign since there's nothing to look at. He just looks down and listens. Check swing. No, he didn't go. And Bellinger is aboard. Pretty good take there on a 
chase change up well executed pitch but Bellinger doesn't bite. I may have mentioned earlier I may have said that Herman is three and three that's not accurate he's five and five. I'm going to give the man his due. I had a lot of people blowing me up on yeah. Twitter about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. And uh, I don't know why he wears zero, I, but he did wear 55. Well, that was Rodon he gave, he gave took that, that to, number. Yeah, yeah, he gave it up to Rodon. So he, when, when opting to, to pick a new number, he went for zero. I don't, I don't know if there's any specific uh, meaning behind it. Two thousand nineteen, Herman was an eighteen game winner, eighteen and four that year with a four oh three ERA. Lifetime thirty one up, twenty six down, and a four forty. As, uh, as we mentioned in our open, his his perfect game kind of came out of nowhere. Start before three and a third innings, eight earned runs. The start before that, two innings, seven earned runs. That's wild. You're looking at a, a four game stretch where his combined ERA is 820, and there's a perfect game in there. Yeah, the, the golf analogy would be like. Uh, Triple bogey, triple bogey, hole in one, triple bogey. Right. And I think uh, that's something most golfers would take. 24 times there's been a perfect game pitched in Major League Baseball. Chopped on the ground, and Volpe to Torres on the first. They were really close together. I thought Volpe was going to take it himself. Instead, they go 6 4 3, ends the inning, and we'll go to the bottom of the second, 1 0. Ticket holder waiting list to claim your spot in our lineup for season tickets. It's easy and free to register. Visit cubs.com slash waiting list to sign up. There's Billy McKinney now. So it'll go McKinney and then LeMahieu and then Volpe. Yankees got their run on a Rizzo RBI double. Center field and Bellinger is right there to make the catch. So McKinney retired one away. On the ground and through the left side, and LeMahieu rolls a base hit into left field. Along with Bader, LeMahieu, one of the other Yankees who's seen Kyle a decent amount. Uh, five out of 19 against Kyle uh, coming into play here today. And so that one, LeMahieu was uh, with the Rockies. He's been really struggling. The swing has not looked good. They were trying to jam him there with the two seamer, didn't quite getting in on the hands.
Mayhew is not a threat to run. Volpe shortened to bunt, takes a strike, although Kazone said it was a bit low. And 0 and 1 on the kid from New Jersey. He was really scuffling. And now at least has got the average up over 200. 215 with a 287 OBP. Next pitch misses low. But this is kind of unique. Anthony Volpe has played in each of the Yankees' 91 games. One of three American League rookies since 88 to do that. Hideki Matsui with the Yankees and then Delman Young with the Rays. So it doesn't happen all that often. No, it does it. not, no. Yeah, to make make the club out of spring training, be the opening guy, opening day guy, and then stay in the lineup throughout. Yeah. He's got power, 12 home runs this year, 21 last year, 27 the year before in the minor leagues. Roller to short, corner to second, and they get the out there. Good quick feet by Nico, and then shoveled it over to Morrell who by the way JD has done a pretty good job in this series defensively wouldn't you say yeah he's looked good out there uh, you can mentioned yesterday I think that might be his best defensive position um, obviously that's, you know, Horner will return there when Swanson comes back Strike to Higashioka. Volpe takes that. What, what, what's the terminology they use for that dynamic lead? They take vaulted vaulting, lead. vaulted lead, bouncing around out there. Slap the other way and a fair ball, and it'll kick off the sidewall. Suzuki will grab it and fire it into Morel. And they're at the corners, first and third. And this ball not hit all that well. He really works hard to carve that thing to right. It's a funky swing, but an effective swing. Higashioka, well played by Suzuki out there. I'll have to throw up the stop sign for Volpe at third base. This is Volpe yesterday when he got picked off. I'm not sure. I wonder if he was throwing his hands up as if to maybe try to block the throw. Sometimes on that play you'll see base runners just stay upright hoping that the ball hits them. Or maybe he was just trying to be airborne. Maybe heard us talking about Marvel and thought he could fly. Coming into the start, uh, opposing hitters hitting just 199 against Hendricks. And batting average in balls in play really low. So if you're one of those, you know, analytical types, you might think he's due for some ball in play bad luck. Some regression? Yeah. Mm. Strikeout rate of 14.4 is well below league average. And you don't strike people out and the ball's in play a lot. Uh, even when you're generating a lot of soft contact, some sometimes bad things happen. Glaber's soft single his first time, just dunk one into right. On the ground, Morrell with one hand gloves it and underhands. Yikes, the first. <laughs> The old yikes. Out of the third one.
Something Book Shambi Jim Deshaies, Elise Medicker, and very happy to be joined by Cubs starting pitcher, former Yankee Jameson Tyone in that third base dugout. Um, great job the other night. How much fun was that for you? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was fun. It was it was fun to be back here. Uh, Friday night in the Bronx is a pretty cool environment, so to be able to have a good one on this stage was definitely nice, and and start off the series with a win. What was good the other night? What were the things that you felt like? Yeah, I had that working. Uh, a little bit of everything. Um, I thought like early count, I did a good job of getting ahead through a lot of first pitch strikes. Uh, the slider was good early in counts. Um, thought the curveball was fine. Moved the four seam around. Um, and honestly, like I was just glad to see some righties in there too. It's been a while since I've faced like six righties in a lineup. Domingo Herman will get back to work. And that one popped foul. Is there a lot of this is what I was asking earlier. We're making it light already. But uh, is there a lot of birthday cake in the clubhouse because it's <laughs> it's J.Y.'s birthday and it's Tommy's birthday. Is it Tommy's birthday. It's Tommy's birthday. Dude, oh I, no. I've missed that. Didn't chop. Right. Oh man. I, I got J.Y. earlier. Um, we'll have to see what the nutritionist Brittany has for us in there. Hopefully there's like a gluten free something. cake or something. I would be down with that. OK. <laughs> Going into the all star break. I'm sure it'll be it'll be regular. Because <laughs> you got a couple of days off. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And maybe you could run up the concession stand between innings and buy Tommy a Yankee hat or something. <laughs> oh man, I think he got a canceled flight for his birthday so far. No, no. He's gonna go see his family. Oh, oh, oh no! Really? McKinney, the bobble, but he still manages to hang on. Come on. So Young is out. So Jamie, you mentioned about the left-handed hitters. What, what's the what's the fix against lefties? Is there, is there any any like pitch mix thing or anything you feel like you need to do differently? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a few things we were working on. Just like adding some of my deception back into my delivery. Like maybe I was showing the ball a little early. Um, and then over the past couple of years, like that's never been an issue for me. I've got I've usually handled lefties pretty well. So um, it's just taking a look like what did I do when I was good? You know, how is I getting them out? Um, is it more four seams up and in? Is it maybe maybe less cutters? You know, in big spots, trust trust my strengths, like throw my curveball a little more. Um, so I think I might start throwing a few more change ups in there, too. So, yeah, I mean, I think, number one, it's a pitch mix thing and then just like some delivery stuff. And, and you know, I, I know you're not kind of guy is going to make excuses so I'll make one for you and there have been some like just ball and play luck issues I mean that's what I kind of see a little bit yeah I mean so for me like I would say if that happens every once in a while I, I'll just be like you know what that's baseball that's the game I send up to play but like when it's over like five six seven starts I just felt like that was the game telling me like let's make an adjustment let's punch back here so like yeah there definitely was some batted ball stuff but I do feel like um, you know, maybe that's because I was showing the ball a little early or, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, but, and, and the other night too, there were a few hard hit balls that were hit at someone. So I, I try to be as like honest of an evaluator as I can. Herman gets wisdom and there's two away. Is, is it a little frustrating that you're coming off this great start and now the routine gets upended by the all-star break? Would you rather just be <laughs> out there five days? Yeah, yeah, I'd probably rather just keep going, but um, you know, I, I've gotten big into like writing in my journal lately and stuff. So I made sure I took a lot of good notes that I can go back and, and remember what what that night was like and what it felt like and look at some of the execution stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it was important just to have a game like that just so I can I can kind of use it as a bookmark and go back to it and remember what that was like and, and what was working and what wasn't. A couple of years ago, Kyle and the All Star break went on a trip, I think, somewhere out west, and to get his throwing in, um, he went and threw on a backfield with uh, the Cubs bullpen catcher. But where will you throw in uh, during the break? I've set up some dates with a guy here in New York. I'm staying in New York for a few days, so I, I've got a throwing date with a buddy that we'll meet up in a park in Brooklyn and play catch a few times. Oh, cool! In a park in Brooklyn. Yeah, great the job, New York thing. Great job the other night. Go tell Tommy happy birthday. I will. I got you. Have a good break. <laughs> See you, Jamo. Enjoying a little Taylor Swift between innings. Yeah, the first offering to Stanton misses the mark. Is today Yankee Hawaiian shirt day at the ballpark? Today is Yankee Hawaiian shirt day at the ballpark. Hmm. Tapped foul at the plate. 
Have you ever been to Hawaii? Yes. A couple times. It's been a while though. Yeah. Should go back. It's lovely. The one one. Swang and a miss. One and two. Yeah, uh, I like one of them Hawaiian shirts. The uh, you know the PCL used to have a team in Hawaii. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Is it team. Pittsburgh? Yep. The Pirates were there for a long time. So when, when teams would play there, they would go over and like spend eight days in Hawaii. Because, you know, you wouldn't go over and just play a three-game series. Sure. So that was a, a nice working vacation for players in the Pacific Coast League. Well, the risk of an announcer jinx, Stanton swings here. Not look good against Kyle. That one was better. He had a couple of home runs yesterday, including one. Off the facade down the left field line, measured at over 440 feet. And a foul tip into the mitt of the catcher Barnhart. It's a strikeout. No announcer, Jinx. You were right, Jinx. Yeah, well, he, he, uh, not a lot of experience with Stanton versus Kyle, but coming into this one, he was 0 for 6 with five strikeouts. Uh, just, it's like. Please challenge me and Kyle's like no I'm just going to throw you a little cut change away and dispatch you back to the dugout. Ball one to Anthony Rizzo who's knocked in the game's only run with an RBI double. And time called by Rizzo. Here's a 1 0. That's in for a strike. Tony against Carl. Foul back our way. Anthony kind of hunching change up here, and Kyle feeding him fastballs. And a one two. He pops that one foul. 90 miles an hour that time from Kyle. The nine zero. Yeah. Didn't spend a whole lot of time up there. 90 miles an hour. The numbers for Riz at 405 slugging his lowest since 2011. And it's really taken a hit. Over the course of the last month or so as Hendricks is able to get him back to back punch outs for Kyle. It was just beautiful execution. A lot of fastballs early, and then finally convinces Anthony that maybe he's going to lean on that heater, and he comes back with the changeup. Hendrick steals. Harrison Bader now popped out his first time. Yankees lead it one nothing. Cubs would love to finish up the first half with a W back after the break and at home with three against the Red Sox, three against the Nats, and four against the Cardinals. Yeah, it's kind of put up or shut up time, right? Mm -hmm. Good home schedule coming up after the break, a month uh, till the trade deadline. About a month plus, but. You get the idea. But you finish you start the second half with that group of games and then two against the White Sox. You got to dig in right there. Well, it's, it's just home heavy right. Yeah. Uh, and On the ground but foul. That long home stand and a uh, trip to, to the south side in St. Louis and then right back home. So uh, not so much for me it doesn't matter that much about the, the quality of the competition baseball being baseball but having that, that kind of real heavy home. Schedule leading into the break. That's that's it's, it's going to be go time. That one up the middle. Diving Morel can't get it, and Bader just gets enough of it to put it up the middle and into center for a hit. We're trying to go in on him, and it's down, but out over the plate. He just plays a little pepper. I mean the. the Legs. And it was kind of an awkward stance that he had when he hit that ball. 
similar to the one he, he blocked out to the pitcher in yesterday's game. Yankees do not have a lot of team speed, but Bader's the one guy that can really scoot. Ian Volpe. Cubs come into play today, eight games behind the first place Reds. And six games behind the second place Brewers. Bader on the go. It is seven in the loss column for the Reds and five behind the. That's Brewers. a way to be glasses half full. I like the way you're thinking, Boat. Mm -hmm. and, and the Reds have been on an unbelievable run here. When a team is that hot, there's this tendency to think, well, they're just that's who they are and that's who they're going to be. And it, the way they have pitched, that would be seemingly impossible to sustain. And the second highest ERA in the league. There he goes again. Pitch outside, throw down to second. And that'll skip into center. It's a stolen base for Bader. Didn't make him stop. Just hold the ball maybe a couple beats longer. Make him come to a stop. And Barnhart really didn't have much of a chance in this one. On a strike, Donaldson popped out foul to the catcher his first time and waves at that changeup. Usually about this time of the game Kyle will start to break out the curveball a little bit but he has not featured that pitch yet. Down it away. First three ball count of the afternoon for Kyle Hendricks. Yankees are run on five hits. Cubs don't have a hit zeros across. Bader at second two outs. Kyle trying to finish off Donaldson. Here comes. On the ground, up the middle. Corner will pick it up quickly, throws it towards the plate. Hendricks cuts it off. And a nice play by Nico. That saved the run. Yeah, that situation, you've got to leave your feet and make sure you knock that ball down, especially with a guy like Bader with his speed. And it's pretty weak contact. Just a little roller through the middle of the diamond. Nico, fully aware of Bader's speed, quickly to his feet. Tommy Hadovy out there talking with Kyle Hendricks. Ball one to McKinney who flied to center his first time. Popped up left side. Wisdom drifting back and towards the line. Patrick makes the catch and that is the inning. No runs, couple of hits. The Yankees lead two. We'll head to the fourth. It's one nothing.
last inning. We just saw him last half inning, that defensive play, saving a run. And we see time and time again just the way Nico, the work he puts in, the results that he gets. And he's been really consistent this year as he has stayed healthy. And yesterday before the game, Dansby Swanson was asked, you know, do you think that Nico gets enough recognition for what he does out there? And he said, no, I, I don't think he does. He says even just making that transition from shortstop to second base, it's not easy. And he's making it look really easy. He says the at-bats he puts up, just the way he goes about his game, he's not flashy. He just cares about what's on the scoreboard. And so, you know, whatever it takes to win, that's what he's going to do to help his team. And he says, you know, for whatever reason, guys who go about their business that way, they don't get a lot of attention. And D Nico is definitely very business-like, will do whatever it takes to help his team win. That is what makes him great, just constantly working, guys. I think initially he had a little bit of trouble with the shift rules from the standpoint of so many of the ground balls he'd taken on the right side the last couple of years were with him out in the outfield grass as a starting point and he was having trouble trying to figure out how he wanted to position himself and attack and just get his kind of rhythm and his timing on the right side of the infield while that restriction was in place just a different starting point but in the end he's got so much ability whether it's the right side or the left side of the infield super athletic and he's yeah. giving them good defense yeah he, you know if he's your everyday shortstop in the big leagues you're 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 fine with that right but uh, yeah it's Swanson you put him over there at second base and you know, it's a it's a really good up the middle tandem yeah and when healthy they're up the middle group of those two and Bellinger it's been it's been very good. Swing and a miss, and Herman gets Tuckman again. Now's the time for a healthy start. So let's recharge and play. And do what we love with who we love. Together, let's live well. Nico Horner at the plate. Uh, it's not a perfect game for Herman, but he has faced the minimum because of a double play turn in the second inning. Only base runner of Bellinger walk. One bounce of the backhand, LeMay Hugh, and they throw out Nico Horner two away. So he hasn't given up a hit yet. Tuesday, July 18th, the Cubs celebrate the Marvel Universe at Wrigley Field, presented by Toyota. Fans can take photos with heroes. And participate in Marvel activations. Purchase through the special ticket offers page to receive a limited edition Loki Marvel superhero bobblehead. Purchase tickets at Cubs.com slash specials. JD, who's Loki's brother? I think he's related to Thor. They're brothers. Going one on Ian Hap. Much the way Speed Racer and Racer X are brothers. That's right. I saw Ian Hap. Yesterday, and then I asked him about it today. But his he was getting on the bus yesterday. He had his Olivia Rodrigo shirt on, and I don't know whether you remember. For 2021, oh, yeah, yeah. he was struggling, and he, he had the great quote. I think he was on with Dan Bernstein, and he said. You're hitting 160 in June. And you're driving home listening to sad songs by Olivia Rodrigo, just trying to get through the day. So he was wearing his Olivia Rodrigo shirt on the bus yesterday. I mentioned he's five for his last 41 since that two homer game. And I looked at him and I said, Were you sad? And he said, Yes. And that was the extent of the exchange. Herman gets him right there, and one, two, three, go the Cubs. Yeah, Chicago Sky and the Atlanta Dream. The game tips off at 7 p.m. right here on Marquee Sports Network. And Kyle drops a curveball in for a strike to DJ LeMayhew. First appearance of the day from Uncle Charlie. Kyle's allowed six hits, two in each inning so far, so it's been a bend-don't-break performance for Hendricks. 
And to hold the line while the Cubs try to figure out Domingo Herman, who's not yet allowed a base hit. Four of the six hits have been below 95 miles an hour, so not hard hit. Knocked down, Hendricks will go retrieve it, and from the back side of the mound, throws out LeMayhew. Again, trying to run the sinker in on the hands of LeMayhew. It's a pretty good piece of it. The Kyle there to knock it down. No panic. Finishes square to home plate, always in good fielding position after he turns that ball loose. And there's the curve again. That one drops into Volpe. A decent percentage, a high percentage of his curveballs will come on 0 counts. Established sinker change up early, and then curveball becomes a bit of a surprise pitch. And if you can find it, you know, find the zone with it, it's basically stealing a strike. Slap foul the other way. On uh, the ground is short where Horner charges and fires on the move two away. Hey, good people. For the next five consecutive home Friday matchups, the Cubs will wear their Nike City Connect uniforms, honoring a different neighborhood that makes our city so uniquely Chicago. Next Friday, July 14th, the Cubs celebrate the Uptown neighborhood. Visit Cubs.com slash Neighborhood Fridays to learn more. Paint. Colored a little outside the line there, but he got got the call. Barnhart's got to be having a blast back there. Just catchers like it when you set up and they the pitcher can can throw it to the spot. And the guys that spread all over the place sometimes the catchers will say I'm I'm not going to move anymore because we're, we're losing strikes because I'm setting up in the outside corner. I have to reach across to, to catch one on the inside corner and we don't get the call. Yeah, Barnhart. Does a good job of sticking it in terms of presenting the pitches, framing numbers, usually pretty good. One and two on Kyle Higashioka. So it's the Kyle Kyle matchup. You know what John Sterling's home run call for him is, right? I do not. It's Kyle Higashioka, the home run stroke <laughs> He's got some good ones. <laughs> I'm not sure I put that at the top of the list. But. Struck him out. Say Suzuki will come up to hit. He'll lead things off. Suzuki, Bellinger, Morell. Cubs trail it by a run. With a perfect game, two starts ago, and put it into context in terms of how. Frequently you see an event like this occur a no hitter it's once every 739 games a perfect game one every 9822 games eight or more strikeouts to start a game one every 47,147 games JD started in 1986 <laughs> against the Dodgers yeah and eight punchies in a row yeah take that all you perfect game guys. You like a shooting star, JD. Kenny Rogers, David Cohn, Tom Browning. So many of the perfect games were thrown by finesse guys. You notice that? Not, not necessarily power guys. Yeah. You know, not not a law, not a whole bunch of Hall of Famers on that list.
Philip Umber. That's right, Philip Umber. Swing and a high fly ball left field. This is well struck at the wall, and that one is gone. Say Suzuki will touch them all. And the Cubs have drawn even. It's 1 1 as Saya goes yard for the seventh time this year. First hit of the game for the Cubs is a long ball, and Kyle Hendricks just had his first three up, three down inning, and now the Cubs respond with this long ball from Suzuki. And boy, do we need to see a whole bunch more of that in the second half of the season. This home run replay is brought to you by Toyota, official vehicle of the Chicago Cubs. Say ya later. Suzuki with the knock. Ramon has been susceptible to the long ball. That's the 16th he's allowed this year. Bellinger drives this one to center, but Bader has room. Got to feel good for Saya. The Cubs, 11th out of 15 teams in homers hit in the National League. Had stretches early in the season where the home run ball was more a part of things, but not so much of late. And when it has been, and it's usually this guy, Christopher Morell. 15 home runs, he's got the most homers on the team. A swing and a miss, and he's gone. Morell leads the team in home runs despite having the ninth most at bats on the team. Strikeout number seven for Herman. We talked about his curveball <clears throat> pitch that he uh, uses a lot, but it's the changeup that's been really good here today. Young will pop it up. Bader. Has it. Say it puts a charge into one. We're midway in the fifth, and it is one one. Hendricks delivers a strike to Glaber Torres. That one missing. A mass exodus as the rain started to fall. Yeah. They're just fleeing to the concourse. It's not raining all that hard. On the ground to third. Nice play. Wisdom gets up. Throw to first. And that one kicks away from Young. I don't imagine that'll be an infield single. Yeah, great glove work by Patrick. Had to hurry the throw. And Normally he's going to get off a, a more accurate throw in that situation. Tough hop for Young to handle on the other end as well. Kind of a tweener. That part of it's really slick. Just couldn't pull off the accurate throw. Kyle giving a little round of applause. Love the effort from Patrick Wisdom. Ball to strike to Stanton is 0 for 2. Runner takes off. Pitch is outside and a stolen base for Glaber Torres. Huge jump. Good recognition by Barnhart. There was no play to be made there.
It is not in Kyle's nature to, to just groove a fastball. Anyway, and certainly not with stand up there, three one and a base open. You have to do your work inside against Stanton. He's so strong, has great power to all fields. Sam hit a ball in Miami a few years ago on a line to right center. I've never seen another human hit the ball that far to the opposite field on that kind of a trajectory. Stanton is gone. And there's one away. My goodness. How good is that? Yeah. Coming back from 3 1. <laughs> Just absolutely dots the outside corner at the notch of the knees. So now it's Anthony Rizzo. That's a little bit low. Ball one to Riz, who has an RBI double and a strikeout swinging. Last time he fed him fastballs early in the at bat and then got him to chase a good changeup for strike three. Right field, and that's a foul ball. I just wonder if, if, if Rizzo's funk is a little bit, you know, due to the injury of Judge, if he put too much on his shoulders, thought he had to carry the team. I don't know. It's pop psychology, but it could be something there. Rizzo hits it to center Bellinger back and Cody makes the catch. Cup fans go to marqueesportsnetwork.com for the latest Cub news and in-depth feature stories presented by Jeff Vukovic your local nationwide insurance agent visit jeffvuk.com nationwide is on your side. Kyle Hendricks wants a new baseball and we'll get it. I'm a baiter with the, the mouth guard. Yeah. Coordinating with the batting gloves and the elbow and shin guards. Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's that's next level. Drilled but foul down the left side. There you go. What's up with that? Bruce Bolt. Center field Bellinger to his right. Makes the catch. Inning over. We'll head to the sixth. 1-1 one, one game here in New York. Wisdom Barnhart and Talkman. A lot of Cub fans here for the three game weekend series. A lot of Cub fans in New York for it. Cub fans travel. Believe it. Wisdom, a strikeout victim his first time. Takes a little bit low there, and now the count. Is two and oh Patrick since that two homer game go back to May 28th he's three for 44 so it's been a it's been a rough patch for him. Yeah he's, he's in a tough spot because he's not get re getting regular playing time and he doesn't have a kind of approach or swing that suits itself to to part time play. But you got to deal with the you know. The adversity and you know, get hot, you'll get more playing time. Takes the walk there. Leadoff man is aboard. That's the go ahead run. And a reminder tonight Marquee Sports Network has all your MLB draft coverage at the 2023 Cubs draft special. It's brought to you by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana GMC dealers. Don't miss it. It's tonight after the conclusion of the first two rounds. So check that out.
And again, right here on Oop. Marquee Sports Network. Did he twist his he's ankle? Tum he stumbled going back into the bag and almost fell off. Yeah, like he rolled his ankle a little bit. Pretty quick move here by Herman. Lunging back for the base. Hey, he just got his feet caught yeah. up and then Riz just kind of pressed the tag on him. Jim Wolf saying, please stand by. Jim Wolf saying, oh. <laughs> the Wolf Man. Andy Green with Nick Frangella by his side, seeing if he needs the head athletic trainer to head out there, but instead, Wisdom will stay put. So, man at first, Wisdom represents the go ahead run. Barnard can pull one through the hole on the right side, play a little first and third here. Tried. We got Mike Napoli. Jim Wolf, year in and year out, wins the annual uh, umpire's arm wrestling competition. Yes, he does. Brother Randy, a longtime major league pitcher. Mm -hmm. And he was never allowed to ump the plate when no. Randy pitched, right? I feel no. like they let him do it in spring training eventually at some point. I would, if I, if I were Jim, I would have squeezed them like crazy. Just, you know, there had to be some little brotherly rivalry that he could. <laughs> you got to be a big league pitcher. I'm an umpire. Ball two. Jim Wolf got a good sense of humor. The runner takes off, swing and a miss. Throw down is too late. And so it looks like that ankle is just fine. A stolen base for Patrick Wisdom. Yankees have swiped a couple bags here today. Patrick with his third. He's three out of four now. They pitched, pretty, picked a pretty good pitch to run on a changeup, I believe. In the air, right field, but right at Stanton, who makes the catch. Wisdom will tag. And the throw is too late. Let's send it downstairs. And Elise Meneker. We saw Wisdom steal that bag. And it's not as obvious, at least with that one, that he does that vault lead. We talked about Anthony Volpe doing it earlier. They kind of do that little shuffle step. Nico Horner, he takes that lead as well. And it started this year, and he said he actually got it from Patrick Wisdom. He saw that he did it, and this was the first year that he tried it when he would steal from first to second. And he said that with the new rules, it kind of allows for it, or it welcomed the opportunity to at least explore taking that lead. And not necessarily why he does it, but he says it definitely has helped him try it and he says he feels comfortable with it and it's just you know about trying to take advantage of what the pitcher is doing finding the right time a lot of skill he says that goes into stealing and so you know much more than just you know being the fastest guy in the field because he and actually Volpe told me they're not the fastest guys in the field they just try to take advantage of the right opportunity order pops this one up foul off to the left and LeMay who will watch that sail out of play well, I certainly have enjoyed watching stolen bases occur with more frequency. This year, the stolen base rate is up four percentage points from 75.4% to 79.4% in terms of the success rate. And 79.4% would be the highest in the history of the sport. Well, you know, back in the day, there was a lot of stolen bases, but there wasn't a real understanding of the risk-reward balance. Yeah. Swing and a miss, and Herman able to get Horner. One-one game.
Friday night, July 14th. Seats are available at all levels. Get your tickets now at Cubs.com slash tickets. That's right, the Red Sox are coming to town. And their manager, <laughs> General Zod. <laughs> So here in the booth we have a, a button that's called talk back and it's not like we don't love making fun of one another on the air but sometimes it's just a little joke between one of us and the truck. So after that happens I may hit the button there and say did he just say Red Sox. I however never do that <laughs> to you my friend Yes, because I'm a bad person <laughs> swing and a miss and Donaldson is gone to the Yankee fans more love for Josh Donaldson not happy with the former MVP not happy at all well, a Dandy even off speed pitch getting the job done yet again. Strikeout number five for Kyle. Well, because while you were doing that, I was in my own head going, did I just say Red Sox? Billy McKinney with one out, the base is empty. One interesting note to pass along is that even though the Red Sox are in last place in the American League East, every team in the East, including the Red Sox, are yeah, over 500. Yeah. The Sox are 47 and 43, as a matter of fact. So if you think your schedule is softening because you're playing a last place team, that's just not the case. Mm -hmm. This Yankee group they're having their struggles as well. They're seven back in the East. And, uh, Baltimore by five Tampa's in first two better than the Orioles. The Yankees have gone to the postseason 24 times in the last 28 years. Two two. Softly hit center field and that'll fall. Get another, another ball not really well struck but it drops in. Hit number eight for the Yankees. Kyle's had just the one one two three inning that was in the fourth. You never felt like he was in. You know jeopardy though of, of giving up a, a, a big number. His command's been good. There's D.J. LeMahieu now one for two. But uh, we are moving towards the later stages of this ball game, and the Yankee bullpen is a real strength. So at this stage, one run could be huge. McKinney at first, Kyle at 01. Slash the other way, but foul. That's what that good changeup does for you right there. Puts a guy behind a center cut 87 mile an hour fastball. Out towards right center Bellinger Suzuki will give way and Cody makes the catch as the throw comes in. Kyle's not a guy that generates normally a lot of strikeouts he depends on soft contact and you know today five of the eight hits allowed not what is statistically considered hard hit and since he debuted you look at lowest average exit below Burns Eflin and then Hendricks 
Now, J.D., I, I know we're, you know, this is his ninth start. But he's really looked a ton like the guy from 2014 to 2020. Yeah, it, it's been one of the better stories for the Cubs all year, really. The, the return to form of Kyle Hendricks after a couple of rough seasons and a big uh, shoulder issue. Because I don't, you know, I don't think anybody really knew what we we're going to see from Kyle. Drilled the left field, half back, back some more, and it's gone. Volpe with the home run. Yankees lead at 3 1. Yeah, well, big swing of the bat there by the rookie Volpe. Kyle's been effective working that two seamer in on the right handed hitters here today. Last at bat, it looked to me like Volpe was cheating a little bit, looking for the ball in, and clearly here he's able to open up that front side and get to that sinker that's on the inside corner up a little bit, but he was ready for it. The third home run Kyle has allowed this year, number 13 for Volpe. Yeah, that is the thing. If you look at Cubs three best starters this year, Stroman, Steele, and Hendricks, the thing they have in common, keeping it in the park. And there is Julian Merriweather. Jerry, as he's known. Somebody on Twitter said that after Kyle struck out Higashioka last time that it should be Kyle Higashioka. This at bat is over. Go run that down to the uh, Yankee radio booth. I will. Right field Suzuki back near the wall. And Higashioka gets enough of it. That didn't look like much off the bat, did it? No. My goodness. Very hitter friendly right field at Yankee Stadium that has always been the history of this ballpark. Whatever iteration you want to consider. Yeah, that's the small part of the field. Right there in the heart of it. Now breezy here today. I don't know if it's helping, hurting, or, or otherwise. A very good outing. Kind of ends on a sour note for Hendricks. So Merriweather. WNBA action: The Dream versus the Sky, and after that, the Cubs draft special. First two rounds of the draft, and it'll be highlighted right here on Marquee. Got some hoops. We got some draft. We got a new chunker into the game for the Cubs. Julian Merriweather on for the 38th time, third time on this road trip. Pitched back to backs in Milwaukee on Monday. And was not effective. Allowed three runs in two thirds of an inning. And then Tuesday, a scoreless inning of work. Drops that slider in for a strike. Julian was a fifth round pick of the Guardians back in 2014. That's first rounder stuff. Fastball that'll touch 100 miles an hour. Good sharp slider and a really nice changeup. 
He's a California kid. He actually he went to Sarah High School in San Mateo. That's the same school that produced Barry Bonds. Up the middle, Morell throws him out. That's a good play. Yankees pick up a couple of homers and take the lead onto the seventh. It's 4 1. You hit one, Kyle Hendricks, with the strikeouts, but we're looking at the seventh inning. Over, under, half a run. What do you think? One over, half the goal. Cubs need some runs. They do, absolutely. And they need a win to go four and three on the seven game road trip. We'll catch you on Cubs Post Game Live. Until then, back to you guys. All right, guys, thanks. And Ian Happ will stand in against Domingo Herman, who's been in command here today. Only run he's given up a Seiya Suzuki solo homer. Real nice change up. Good command of the fastball. A lot of work down at the bottom of the zone. Need base runners and hat. And very good at working walks this year. And take mode here all the way on 3 0. Get that one again, hit it into the second deck. Change up, I'm not going to give in. Ian Happ will take his base. So the leadoff man is aboard. Time now for How Far Did It Travel? I'm brought to you by the Bob LaCorsi Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way. How far did what travel, you ask? That one. Say a Suzuki home run. 371 feet. Billy McKinney doing everything he could, but just ran out of room. Home run number seven for Suzuki. So Aaron Boone making the move. Herman is done for the day. Pitched well. And a pitching change brought to you by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Yankees lead the Cubs 4 1. We're in the seventh. Yankees go into the bullpen, and Ian Hamilton will take over. Yankees have the number one bullpen ERA in the majors. Hamilton two pitch pitcher fastball slider fastball there at 97 miles per hour. He's appeared in 21 big league games this year and posted a 2.03 ERA. Depth on that slider. He debuted, uh, Hamilton did with the White Sox back in 18. They drafted him in 2016. Remember, they had Hamilton and Burr together for a time. <laughs> Ooh, that looked like it hurt the wrist a little bit in the hand. And came off and so he was shaking his bottom hand a little bit after that. Apparently, no issue. Go ahead, say I went into that gap in right center. Outside. Oh, 
It's clearly a grimace there. 2 2. Popped up, foul ground. Rizzo. I am greatly honored to be inducted into the broadcaster's wing of the Baseball Hall of Fame. And my friends at BigTimeBats.com have made exclusive bats commemorating the event. Get your pat bat. Cody Bellinger homered here on Friday. It was his first game as a big leaguer in Yankee Stadium. He had played here as a high schooler or, or an amateur player. A showcase event. I'm not sure how old he was, but he told me he went deep here. Two balls, no strikes. Dad, of course, won a couple of rings with the Yanks. That's roped out into right center field. Stanton will pick it up. And his uh, hitting streak snapped yesterday. Second hit of the game for the Cubs here this afternoon. 95 mile an hour fastball. Down a little bit, but out over the heart of the plate. And buggy whips it. And this would seem like a, be a good time to get a little something, something going, huh? Maybe Morrell hit one in the gap. Cubs managed just five hits in the ball game yesterday. Friday they had seven. They didn't really tear the cover off the ball. They, Road Jamison tie on to victory on Friday night. Twenty six and two thirds for Hamilton this year. He's allowed two home runs. On the ground and Torres kicks it towards the mound and everybody's going to be safe. Labor Torres booted it literally. Boy as a middle infielder that's exactly what you're looking for is a ground ball with some pace on it and it was going to be an easy double play and now it's high stress time for Aaron Boone and the Yankees as the Cubs catch a huge break. My big opportunity. So Aaron Boone will make the move. Big error pitching change. It's brought to you by Lakeside Bank. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. Cubs have the bases loaded because of this. We'll take a look at it. This coverage cam is brought to you by T Mobile. Pretty routine double play ball booted by Torres. A little bit of a hurry there. Booted it. Presents the Cubs with a golden opportunity. So infield back base is loaded for Jared Young. A chance to hit with the sacks packed down 4 1 Canely on here. And a swing and a miss. Yeah, he flashed a real good change up here the other night. He's pitched 15 times. Uh, missed a bunch of time due to bicep tendonitis. He's not yet allowed a run. Third longest scoreless streak by a Yankee reliever to start a season. A 
What would you like more on your birthday than a grand slam in Yankee Stadium. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, it would. As a tough customer, though. Here's a one two. Closing batters just six out of 48 against Canley this year. And going back to last year, it's 20 consecutive scoreless innings for him. Haps at third, Bellinger at second, Morrell the runner at first. 2 2 to Young. Inside low, Canely wanted it, a changeup, and now there's no place to put him. Three and two. Based on what we've seen today and what we saw Friday, it's hard, it's hard to come off that changeup. Yeah. He's really leaning heavily on that pitch. 3 2. Bounce towards first Rizzo to Canely a run scores and it's 4 2. So they get a run back. Looks like Patrick Wisdom is going to be called back and Jan Gomes coming out of the Cubs dugout. Gomes, Mancini, Amaya available from the right side. Master Boney is a left handed hitter on the bench today. Yon is a pinch hitter this year, one for four. See if he goes to a little bit more of a fastball slider approach with a right handed hitter. Went too far. So now nothing in two. And the pitch. Dome stays alive. O2 line drive sinking base hit center field one run is in here comes Morrell he's in Jan Gomes off the bench a two run single and we're starting over tied 4-4. Four -four. Well, Torres misplay opens up the door and then Cubs take full advantage Gomes off the bench got on top of that high fastball it's kind of what we've seen a lot of today. Uh, ball not really well struck, but it finds a little green grass out there in shallow center field. A heartbreaker for Tommy Canley. Uh, hang with him for Glaber Torres in a tie ball game. Bounce towards first, but foul. 
It's interesting. I was watching the body language of Domingo Armand leaving the field. And he was very excited. He was applauding, and acknowledging the fans, and I get all that. But I'm thinking, I have this lead, and I, I walked the leadoff man in the seventh, and I'm kind of chapped. Right. I didn't see any chapped. And it's come back to bite them. You know I like it when grumpy old guy makes a, an appearance. <laughs> you know I do. He just kind of, I mean, he pitched a, a really nice game, and, but that. Mm. Um, three run lead in the seventh. Kind of asking for trouble, and then obviously the misplay by Torres makes those runs unearned. in the air of Miles Master Boney down there. He's one of the faster Cubs. High fly ball pulled foul. Been at Barnhart's numbers earlier. He has not had a lot of playing time since the end of May. At the start of the season, at least my feeling was I thought the, the playing time would be more even between Gomes and Barnhart. But Tucker struggled. Gomes has been solid. And of course, the, the emergence of Amaya has taken away some at bats from Barnhart as well. Gomes got off to such a good start offensively. I'm with you. That, that was what I anticipated. And then. Yeah, he started off cold. Two two now. Kane Lee on the ground there, and Volpe handles it. Jan Gomes a pinch hit two run single, absolutely huge. Gets enough of it from midway of the seventh. It's time to stretch, and it's four four. Let's live well and make the most of every moment, game day, and every day. And by Wintrust, proud legacy partner of the Chicago Cubs and exclusive home of Cubs checking. Derek Lee, 2005, what a year he put together. And time now for our McDonald's McNugget of the game. Okay, this from the great Sarah Langs. We love you, Sarah. Josh Young and Corbin Carroll both named All-Star Game starters. It's the second time a pair of rookies have been selected to start an All-Star Game. The other time, 08, Kosuke Fukudome and Giovanni Soto. A couple of Cubs and the last rookie to start, the Yankees' Aaron Judge in 2017. So it's rare for the rookies, but yeah, the last time two rookies selected to start, Two Cub guys. All right, time now for our Prevagen memorable moment. We take you back this day. 1991, Andre Dawson homering off Roger Clemens in the fourth. The 91 All-Star game in Toronto. Dawson crushed a tape measure home run to dead center field. Ken Griffey Jr. just kind of turned, watched, and it was the last of Dawson's eight All-Star game appearances. The Hawk hammering one there. Four-four game here.
You'll note no David Ross in the picture. He was ejected early for the uh, start of the bottom of the first. Harry Weather misses to Stanton. Kyle Hendricks was charged with a pitch clock violation before the inning even started. And Rossio also not happy with a couple of calls by the home plate umpire Alex McKay. And after a couple of exchanges, Rossi was dispatched to start his All Star break early. Three balls, no strikes. It's the one thing for for Merriweather. When there have been some struggles, walks have usually been part of it. That time, really? That was a miss. That was a good pitch. Yeah, it was. That stamp might be swinging there on 3 0, but it looked like he was taking all the way, and that pitch did catch the top of the zone. Anthony Rizzo asks for time as he faces the hard throwing right hander. Rizzo one for three. And a fastball in there for a strike at 98 miles an hour. And these Yankee hitters got to turn up the, the dial a little bit right after facing Kyle with the 87 88 and that great changeup. Now they got to deal with the Velocity that Merriweather features. And that's in for a strike. Rizzo choking up. And that went a little bit low. And he's been so good with that two strike approach throughout his career willing to sacrifice a little power to put it in play. Of course in this ballpark even you know <laughs> his strength three quarter swing he can hit the ball out of the ballpark to the pull side. Four four bottom seven man at first nobody out. Up there, not playing a traditional double play positioning on the infield. Morrell Moore trying to take away the hole a little bit on the right side. Right field, Suzuki coming on to make the catch. On Wednesday, July 19th, the Cubs take on the Nationals. First pitch, 7:05. First 10,000 early arriving fans will receive an Ernie Banks statue bobblehead, presented by Wintrust. Purchase tickets at Cubs.com/specials. So on the break, it's the Red Sox and then the Nats. Bader one for three. And that's a strike, says Jim Wolf. Swing and a miss. Bader is gone. And there are two outs. Devastating slider here for Merriweather. I mean, straight down. Out of the hand, it looks pretty good. Peter has a blink of an eye to make up his mind whether to swing or not.
Donaldson coming up empty. Donaldson has 14 hits this year. How many homers? 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a bizarre. Really weird. Bizarre stat line. It's a record of sorts. Inside. What's he, 37 now? Yes, he is. A lot of times what happens, the guy's age, the bat speed slows down. They have to guess a little bit more. They're more susceptible to swing and miss, but still strong enough that they run into one to hit it out of the ballpark. And in this time due to injury, 108 plate appearances coming into play today. And it's might be a matter of just needing more at bats. Let's see how long the Yankees stay with him. And Donaldson will take his base. Out of these, would come out and have a chat. 4 4 game. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Tommy, the long walk to the mound. Well, the last time he was out there was prior to the McKinney at bat. There was uh, action in the Cubs bullpen, and so probably mostly about getting somebody going. Seven guys standing out there, and for two of them, it's their birthday. What are the odds? Crazy. Injuries have presented an opportunity for Billy McKinney to, to get some at bats with the Yankees. He's a guy with a lot of Triple A time and not a ton of major league experience. He's bounced around a number of different organizations, including the Cubs. Standed second. He's the go ahead run. And that's a strike to McKinney. Nothing at two. Merriweather says yes, and the pitch to McKinney. Check swing. Peel to third, didn't go. That's Alan Porter down there. It's a good 0-2 pitch, though. Chase breaking ball, anxious hitter, an RBI situation. Tie game in the seventh. Last thing you want to do is spin it and leave it in the zone in this situation. Change up and he just flew open a little bit. Try to throw that perfect one. Tendency to open up a little early on that front side. Yankees are two for nine with runners in scoring position today. The Cubs one out of five. Merriweather 2 2. Left field half back racing back near the wall and he makes the catch.
by Toyota, official vehicle of the Chicago Cubs, by UI Health, changing medicine for good, and by Michelob Ultra. 2008 All-Star Kerry Wood. A look at some of the Cub All-Stars throughout the years. Been some cool picks throughout this broadcast. All-Star game coming up on Tuesday. And the new pitcher will be Ron Marinaccio. It's been an important piece for them as well this year. His big league debut last season. He's out of the University of Delaware. Fastball slider changeup. Tockman base hit out of the center field. Nice and smooth. Tockman gets a pitch up. Doesn't overswing. Good solid line drive single to get things started here in the eighth. Normally very aggressive. A couple of good takes. I'll see if you get something in this 2 0 count. We can put a good swing on one. Nico waits and a 2 0. Good eye. Wow. So Horner is aboard and two on. And nobody out in an opportunity for Ian Happ. Lead off walk last inning got things started for the Cubs and then the Glaber Torres error was huge and the Yankees. Showing some charity here in the eighth as well with that one out walking. And Nico's a tough guy to walk. He doesn't walk that much. So wasn't very many competitive pitches by Marinaccio in that sequence. Downstairs and Elise Medica. And in these close games, Ross was asked about them as they wrap up the first half asked in this series and he was just saying you know something big is that obviously you got to get the results in those situations so how do you do that well you know throwing up a zero after you score runs well you can check that that they did that in this game the Merriweather going out there giving up a couple of walks but getting out of it without any damage and then what do you have to do get guys on base and so so far this inning doing that getting guys on base now just need to come through with that big hit gosh this would be such a great win to get going into the break yeah, you, you you would feel like you stole one. Yeah, down four one on the road against a Yankee bullpen and a starting pitcher in Herman. It was really rolling along nicely. And a one zero. -oh. Well, Ian Happ, zero oh for two with a walk. This is not a time you think well you got to you got to take a strike here. This is not a time to be pace a passive. You get one in the zone. Let it fly. He's all over the place. Yep. It's one of the things here. That's nice with Ian is even when he's struggling as he has been. He can work that walk. And hand it over and especially with nobody out. 3 0. That's in for a strike. Oh. 
Outside, Happ will take his base, and here we go. They're all loaded up, and Seiya Suzuki will get a chance to hit. And a Yankee bullpen that has been so good this year, having some struggles. Aaron Boone out of the dugout makes the point to the pen. I think he had Clark Schmidt warming up. Sorry, it's Clay Holmes. Pitching change here in the Bronx. A comeback win. It's 4-4. Four, four bases are loaded. Nobody out. And Seiya Suzuki with a golden opportunity. Yeah, this would be uh, the best guy that Aaron Boone has out there, Clay Holmes, who's been his primary closer. He's a turbo sinker, gets a ton of ground balls. He can punch you out as well. Uh, Friday, he came in and worked the ninth. He struck out three, issued a walk. Infield in, obviously, the place to home for the Yankees. We've got a five man infield. Say Suzuki in his career 0 for 10 with the bases loaded. So the five man infield here and a great chance in the eighth. Off the outside edge. Tell you one thing say has shown the ability to hit a fastball right. Absolutely. You know, can you keep the hands inside and get the ball airborne? A lot of green grass out there in that outfield. In the dirt, stopped by Higashioka. And you talk about a high leverage situation. Bring a guy out of the bullpen to face a bases loaded. Nobody out situation with two outfielders. <laughs> yeah. But he's the right guy for the job if you're looking for the ground ball or the punch out. So five guys on the infield all loaded up the pitch. And Saya fouls it back. The right idea got a ball up a little bit that he could get airborne just didn't get the head out. Two two. Out to right field Stanton is there. Tockman will tag. Here's the throw and it's cut off. Sack fly say a Suzuki and it's a 5 4 Cub lead. All right, great job by say Suzuki homered back in the fifth to start the scoring for the Cubs and then gets against this really menacing right hander extreme ground ball guy. He's able to lift that ball to right. Interesting. Normally you see that five man infield. You know, it's like the winning runs on third base in the ninth or extra innings. It's pretty rare to see it in the eighth. Yes, very rare. I like it. Yeah, I did well again, especially with home skill set. Yep. He didn't get the job done there, but he's an you know, extreme ground ball pitcher. Here's Bellinger now trying to add on. Way high, and here comes Nico scrambling across. And it's now 6 4. The wild pitch. The Yankees really making a lot of errors in the last couple innings. Very sloppy in the field and on the mound. Insurance runs are brought to you by Gallagher, helping you face your future with confidence. Just air mails it all the way to the backstop, and in comes Nico. That's in for a strike. Here's the 0 1. Fouled off the plate. Ellinger can get that low ball in the air. Well, 
Well, there's been some nail biters on this trip. Jeez. Four game series in Milwaukee. And belly able to hang in there. I mean, that four game set in Milwaukee, you know, for games at the midway point. A four game series, you're not going to get a much more entertaining no, that four was game as series. It yeah. Really fun. One and two. And Bellinger again able to just get enough. Foul first base side. Cubs have six runs on just four hits here this afternoon. And rain starting to fall. In the air and Bellinger. Frustrated it I think just with himself or just overthinking it. Tremendous movement on this 97 mile an hour two seamer. Yeah, I think that's yeah, I think that's just more about what he was expecting and how he reacted than, than the call by the home plate umpire. Yeah. And the fans now head for cover. These people understand the whole poncho concept. I need to get my hands on a good poncho. Where would you buy a good poncho? Poncho shop. What if we opened up a poncho shop? I'm in. What if obvious shirts made a poncho that just said Boog and JD's poncho? <laughs> what do you think about that? But it, but it wouldn't be a poncho like a. It'd be protector. reusable. No, it would be. Oh, it would no, be. no, it'd be a reusable poncho. Boog and JD's poncho. There's always that fan that can't quite figure that out. Has how to no put idea. It on. Head's going Putting through the arm. Arm. Hole. Absolutely. It's a box. Is that a box? Yeah, it was a box. He slipped. He slipped and. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the. Putting a lot of markers down on the bingo card here. Wild pitch, balk, five man infield, E4. Aaron Boone has concerns about how slippery it is out there. Doesn't want to see another balk drive in and run. So this is a good idea. He's a big man, 6'5, 245. Cup fans probably remember him. His days with the uh, Pirates. Yep. Uh, always had great stuff. Struggled with command early in his career. But you can see that uh, the makings were there for a really good bullpen guy. And he's been really good with the Yankees. A 254 ERA last year, 229 so far this season. On the ground is short. Inning over, but the Cubs scored twice, and as we go to the bottom of the eighth, it is 6 4. Cubs lead the Yanks. It's brought to you by the Bablo Curcio Auto Group. You're going to like buying a car this way by Prevagen. Prevagen is the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand. And by Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Oh, look at Ian Happ last year in Los Angeles, an all-star for the first time, as was Stansby Swanson. It's gorgeous weather. It's actually pretty hot, but nice and sunny. Not so much the case here as they have rolled out the tarp. And that is what's happening. Rain delay presented by Reynolds Wrap. Cover your bases. It's a 6-4 Cup lead, a game they were down 4-1. So, 
guys hanging in the dugout and if you're curious and I know you are how about a game summary it's brought to you by Wind Trust Cubs have scored five times in the last two innings Gomes with a big hit to tie things up the pinch hit two run single Herman went six gave up two runs one earned Yankee bullpen today hasn't been particularly good and then just some sloppiness right you're talking about the wild pitch but also the Glaber Torres error was huge yeah last two innings has been pretty sloppy from from the Yankees they've walked three wild pitch a balk and a huge error by Glaber Torres out at second base and what would have been an inning ending double play and really ending the Cubs a, a nice gift and they've, they've taken full advantage the fear is that the forecast kind of said once the rain hit it was going to stay for a while yeah So the tarp covering the infield fans heading for cover and players just kind of hanging at the moment. The Cubs have come back from a 4 1 deficit now lead it 6 4. Time now for Cubs countdown here on Marquee Sports Network. As soon as we have information and a restart time we will pass it along. Cubs lead it. We're in a rain delay brought to you by Reynolds Draft. Cover your bases. Obviously, it was the heaviest stuff when we left the field. So, good news, we should get the rest of this game, and assuming nothing crazy happens, guys, right? Well, yes, <laughs> assuming nothing crazy right. happens, but of course, you'll have our weather update down there. I feel like I nailed the forecast when I said, when they said the rain came, it was going to stick around for a long time. 20 minutes later, we're playing baseball. Mm -hmm. Nailed it. Stay in your lane. All right, so game summary again. Take a peek at it. Brought to you by Win Trust. Cubs are down 4 1. They've scored five times in the last two innings. Gomes with a big pinch hit, two run single to tie it. And big defensive miscue by Glaber Torres. Yankee Penn today has given up four runs in two innings, two of them earned. And a pitch in for a strike from Michael Fulmer. 40th appearance for the veteran right hander, 462 ERA. Suffered the loss in Milwaukee the other day. Caratini, Victor hit the game winning home run off him in the bottom of the eighth. But uh, he'd been on a real good run prior to that. His last 16 appearances, he has an 098 ERA. They appealed on the check swing didn't go one and one. Fulmer was sitting in the clubhouse yesterday. He's got a good sense of humor and you're right. He. I mean he was. Pegged as the closer but in the overall you know, the way it works with relievers he's, he's done far more good work than bad. Yeah. That one up and in and look out. And the fans unhappy. This fastball just gets away from him. He's got a lot of run, and down goes LeMahieu. 
whether that was his intent or not. Sometimes that can be an effective pitch. You bang away at the outside corner here. Lemay, who's a pretty smart guy, they play him as kind of an outfield hitter in the outfield. That's a heck of a pitch there. Cut it right on the edge. Bellinger closing the gap in right center. A lot more room in left center for LeMahieu. There you go. Game plan for Hendricks against LeMayhew today was a good bit of work inside with the two seamer in on the hands. Former's best pitch, probably the slider. Popped up right side. Jared Young makes the catch, and Fulmer gets the out. Michael Fulmer was sitting there. He was doing a Sudoku puzzle. Mm -hmm. Do you do that? Yeah, I, I go through streaks where I do them a lot. Lately. Yeah, I haven't been too busy. Yeah. yeah, it's a fun activity. Yeah, so went up to him. He was sitting there. He's got a smile on his face. Said, "Michael, how are you? Good. Can I ask you two questions? Sure. Does anybody call you Mike? Nope. Who's the best Sudoku guy on the team? Me." All right, good talk. That was it. No, no embellishment, no uh, further explanation. Just. I think I said, have a nice day, and then that made him laugh. <laughs> Michael, me. not Mike, and uh, give me a five star Sudoku, and I'll nail it for That's you. That's right. Volpe just gets a piece now, one and two. Volpe and Higashioka, the, the eight nine hitters who went deep last time through the order off Kyle uh, back in the sixth. And came Merriweather. He gave you an inning of third scoreless. He would be in position for the win. And that one gets out of play as Master Boney and Hap. And Nico Horner racing down there. Outside corner, ring him up. Ninety six on the outside edge. Man, that is nasty. Again, it looked to me like Volpe was looking for something in. Higashioka gets a piece. Cubs lead it 6 4. They were down 4 1. Three in the seventh to tie, two in the eighth to take the lead. Jan Gomes off the bench with a pinch hit, two run single. That tied it up. When we're debuted with Detroit back in 19, or excuse me. At the age of 23 in 2016, he was a rookie of the year that year and all star the next year. It's back when he was starting. You had me hanging there for just a yeah, second. I don't know if he had debuted in 19, yeah. somewhere in 19, yeah, whatever, that had been. Been around a long time. That would have been cool. <laughs> the next satchel page. <laughs> And Fulmer will call Barnhart out. Michael 
here on a one year deal. One, two. Line drive, softly hit, and that'll find space in left field. It's a two out single, and the inning continues back to the top of the order in Glaber Torres. And go to the slide ball. Not a bad pitch. Up just a little bit on the outside part of the plate. Constant theme today has been a lot of hits on soft contact. That is in for a strike. Torres with a couple of singles. He's also got a stolen base, but he made a crucial error in that three run seventh inning. Foul ball. That got a piece of Barnhart. Torres, like Fulmer, got his career off to a great start. He was an all-star each of his first two seasons in the big leagues. The one-two. Torres, of course, a former Cub farmhand, traded to the Yankees in the Aroldis Chapman deal in 16. The, the, the debate back then, people saying, you know, it was a pretty healthy debate as who the who the best shortstop in the organization was at the time, Russell, Baez, or this kid. Two two. On the ground foul of third. He got a a little bit of time at shortstop to Glaber Torres. They viewed as a second baseman, and then they gave it a go, and then last year went out, made the move, and got Connor Falefa. To play short this year from their own system, they used Volpe. A lot of people thought maybe they'd go out and look at Correa. Oh, and McKay just missed that one. Fulmer dots the outside corner at 96. And if the baseball fills up, gang, it's a strike according to K Zone, and that's a strike. Time called by Glaber Torres. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. If you're just joining us, David Ross ejected before the bottom of the first got going. Andy Green acting as manager. 3 2. Kyle Hendricks was given a pitch clock violation. He did not finish his warm up pitches in time. Prior to the start of the bottom of the first, you've got to have completed your warm up pitches by the 32nd mark. Line drive caught out of the air. Fulmer does the job, and we're headed to the ninth. And we got the All Star break coming up, so we take a peek at the upcoming schedule brought to you by Hyundai. And it will be the All Star game on Tuesday. Home Run Derby is Monday. And then a long homestand three with the Red Sox, three with the Nationals, four with the Cardinals, and off day on Monday. And then we stay in town and go over to the South Side to play the White Sox for a couple. Here's Jared Young now trying to pick up a hit on his birthday. New Yankee pitcher is Neil Ramirez, left hander. Not a hard thrower, average fastball 89 miles per hour. Sink it. 
Slider there. 21 and two thirds, a 2.91 ERA. So one and two now on Young. Jared looking for a hit, one for his last 20. Having a great year down at AAA when he first came up. Had some really nice swings, did some damage. It's been in a little bit of a funk for a while. He's been, they've attacked him with a lot of high fastballs. It's not really this guy's game. Roller along first. Young loses the helmet. Throw to first in time. Jared Young can run. Good play close. by Ramirez. Uh, Andy Green is uh, holding things up as the Cubs contemplate a challenge. Looks like they got him. We'll see. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna challenge it. He just gave the let's go to the headset sign to the umpires. Not an easy play at all for Ramirez. Ultimately makes a pretty good play, and he's safe. Yes, he is. Here's the birthday knock. There it is. So I know it's it's limited time, and it still could change. But by sprint speed, he's right there, matched even with Suzuki and Horner as the fastest guy in the team. I mean, it's. It's tight, right? I mean, Horner, yeah. Morell, Suzuki, those guys are all right are in the same range. Master Boney as well. Go ahead, Allen. Review. The call on the field is overturned. Woo! The runner is safe. Chicago will retain their challenge. And a birthday knock. See, he, shouldn't, he should say that, shouldn't he, on the microphone? Yeah. It's a birthday base hit for Jared Young. Maybe sing. Cubs retain their challenge. Happy birthday, Jared. Yeah. Bunch in order here. Rudder goes. Throw down to second. Tag. Safe. I felt like he said safe before yes. anybody <laughs> yeah, tagged her. That's Sean Barber with a you know normally umpires that you know they're taught. See the play. You don't be in a big hurry. It's nothing until you call it. And Sean Barber came out strong with the safe call. The Yankees aren't going to challenge. Just able to get that back corner with the bag, and then then the challenge becomes: Can you maintain contact throughout the play? Diving headlong to the back corner of the base, and he hangs on for dear life. Still there. Still there. On it out in front of the plate. Higashioka going for third. Safe. And they're at the corners now. And speed manifests itself in many ways in a baseball game, and you're seeing it from Young here. Beats out the little roller to get to first. Barely safe at second. Beats the wrap on this bunt play. Not a great bunt by Miles. Higashioka got on it in a hurry. It's the right play. You're down two already. You got to be aggressive, try to nail that lead runner. But, uh, Young with a good secondary off he goes. He's like a cat with nine lives out there right now. So credit Master Borney with a sacrifice and then fielder's choice. Infield and 6 4 game.
That's a strike done again two. I'm surprised Master Boney's still on first base. field towards the corner and it touches down it's fair Barnhart into second to hold Mastroboni up as Young comes in to score and they get some insurance it is 7 4. Yeah Tucker Barnhart comes through 0 for 3 couple strikeouts prior to this at bat Ramirez goes slider stays up out over the plate and he whacks it into the right field corner this double is brought to you by Elgin Hyundai home of the 20 year. 200,000 mile warranty on every new car. Think about the limited playing time for Tucker over the last month or so. It's starting to heat up a little bit. Talkman really good against left handed pitching. Really good when he goes the other way. Hitting better than 400 when he hits the ball to the left field. Average sits at 241, great on base at 350. Check swing, appeal, didn't go. Cubs beat the Yankees on Friday for their first ever win. Here in the Bronx, they had been 0 12. Now looking to win this series. Yeah, a little bit of history on Friday. Barnhart is the runner at second. Master Boney the runner at third. Two and two. Tockman waits. Here we go. And now it's three and two. As it is so frequently for Michael Tockman. Yeah, we were uh, talking about his nickname the other day when he was with the Yankees. They called him Sockman. And I made up the moniker the Palatine Pounder. I think maybe full count would be the better. <laughs> right. Full count Talkman. Second and third, nobody out. 3 2. Chopped over the mound. And Master Boney reading. Talkman. Retired. Yeah, if he goes on contact there, he's probably safe, but there was nobody out, so you're not going to be super aggressive in that situation. Aaron Boone making the change. He's managing hard. Big time. We're in the ninth. It's at second and third. Fans, entertain your VIPs in the most exclusive suite at Wrigley Field. In addition to enjoying gourmet food and beverage, your group will receive a pregame tour and a visit from a former Cub player during the game. For details, visit Cubs.com slash premier. New pitcher will take over Clark Schmidt, or as they might say around here, Clark Schmidt. Schmidt. He has been a starting pitcher this year. 18 appearances all as a starter. He did a lot of relieving last year. Fastball slider curve cutter change. The rain starting to fall again. Yeah. 
And now with one out, I suspect Master Borney down there at third base would be more aggressive. Ball in place. But, you know, wet grass on the infield, good speed. Go over three, but walked and scored. Last inning, came home on a wild pitch. Needs a little stick him. It has been really good with runners in scoring position this year. Second and third one out. Check swing did he go and Jim Wolf said he did. What'd you think live there. Uh, I, I thought 50 50 live uh, the second time they've struck Nico out today both times throwing that slider off the plate. I didn't think he went. Uh, in reality they're all 50 50 right either either did or didn't. I think I might be wrong. I'm going to go ahead and say I was wrong. Here's Ian Happ. Two pair for Ian today. K's and walks. Follow through and he knocked Higashioka's mask off. Ball to strike two out second and third. I got to admire Higashioka there. It's whacked in the head with that follow through and the first thing he does is let this pitcher know that he liked the pitch. Yes. Gives his pitcher some positive feedback. Two two. Chop softly right side Torres. Cubs add on a run. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. It's seven four. Of the ninth. Get ready to shine like an all star. Explore IvyShop.com or visit the store at Gallagher Way to grab your Steel, Stroman, and Swanson gear before the all star game kicks off. JD, ready for the toast of the yeah, game? Yeah, like I've never been. Toast of the game is brought to you by Vinny's Beverage Depot. If you can't find it at Vinny's, it's probably not worth drinking. Yeah, things were looking bleak for the Cubs, and then uh, Suzuki gets them on the board with his first home run since May 23rd. And he wasn't done there. He came up against a Clay Holmes and lifted that slider into right field for a, another big run. Sack fly scores Talkman as the Cubs rally here late to take command of this ball game. Way to go, say If you can't find it at Vinny's, it's probably not worth drinking. Up to scored six runs in the last three innings and they hand the baton to Albert Alzali to try to finish things off. And he's been a good candidate to do just that. 38 and a third, a 2.35 ERA for 32 appearances. Knees cheese, just a little low.
on the ground. Young will scoop it up, take it himself. They get Stanton, and there's one out. Medford got the save on Friday. A lot of hit, got a double play, punch out, just 10 pitches to finish off that game. In support of Jamison Tyone. Popped up and Bellinger long run long run long run. Oh boy Nico what are you doing to me. <laughs> His range factor just went way up. Yeah it did. That thing skied and the wind may have held it up a little bit too but the assumption made by the middle infielders that that was going to be Bellinger's ball and nobody else. And <laughs> Cody got his running in. That is gold. Yeah, that's a. I mean, look, you expect to lose when you get out hit, but one for 35 is weird. Yeah, it was really the sloppiness of the Yankees that turned this game in the Cubs' favor. The walks, the air, Bach, wild pitch. Center field, Bellinger back, back, makes the catch. Cubs win. Nice end of the first half as they rally from a 4 1 deficit, win it 7 4, and come into the Bronx and take two out of three. They didn't get their first hit until the fifth inning when Suzuki went deep. Things were looking bleak. The Yankee starter, Domingo Herman, was on a really nice roll. He walks the leadoff man in the seventh and Things went downhill at that point for the Yankees and the Cubs taking full advantage. Really nice win here today. Nice series win in the Bronx for the boys in blue. Cubs taking two of three from the Yankees, the Orioles, and the Rays. And a division, the American League East, where every team is over 500 and hasn't phased the Cubs in the head to head. All right, all star game coming up. So a little break for everybody. For Jim Deshays, Elise Medeker, and our entire outstanding crew, I'm John Shambi. Thank you so much for watching Chicago Cubs baseball right here on Marquee Sports Network. Again, your final Cubs seven and the Yankees four. A reminder, the Cubs return home after the All-Star break to face the Red Sox, and that begins Friday night. It's a night game, July 14th, and you can pick your tickets up at Cubs.com slash tickets up next Cubs post game live it presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield Colroy I try to say yeah Cole Wright and Cliff Floyd guys take it away Cole sorry thank you very much Boog in a game that was touch and go the Cubs uh, they now move their way to three and four in rubber matches and it was a quality one Cliff's here I'm here we're going to let you know just how they got it done that more it's coming your way ahead of the all-star break. Cubs post game live. Keep it here.